Egyptian civilization has long been a source of intrigue, with its mystical pyramids, intriguing hieroglyphics, and distinct culture. Among its intriguing aspects is its representation of sex and sexuality, which has often been shrouded in mystique. This video will unveil 15 intriguing facets about sex in ancient Egypt, starting with the analysis of sexual symbolism in Egyptian art. Number 1. Sexual Symbolism in Egyptian Art Egyptian art is renowned for its extensive use of symbols to portray the underlying essence of life, death, and everything in between. Sex and sexuality are no exception, occupying a significant place in this rich tapestry of representation. In ancient Egypt, sexual symbolism was pervasive and often highly explicit, providing a unique lens through which we can understand their complex perceptions of life, fertility, and continuity. Art whether in the form of hieroglyphic carvings, murals, or statues, provided a nuanced narrative of sexuality. For instance, the lotus flower, a recurring motif in Egyptian art, was symbolic of sexual rebirth and regeneration due to its natural behavior of blooming and retracting in sync with the sun. Such subtle depictions of sexuality were frequent, reflecting the cultural emphasis placed on sexual vitality as a life-giving force. Explicit sexual imagery was also present. Statues often depicted gods, goddesses, and pharaohs in a manner emphasizing their sexual prowess, linking it directly to their divine or royal authority. Pharaohs in particular were often portrayed with exaggerated sexual organs, symbolizing their virility and the continuation of their lineage. Similarly, Temple walls were frequently adorned with carvings of sexual encounters between gods and goddesses, reflecting the deeply entrenched belief in the divine power of sex. The Turin erotic papyrus, one of the most explicit examples, offers a candid depiction of sexual intercourse, showcasing the open dialogue around sex in the era. However, these symbols were not merely erotic displays. They were designed to encapsulate the intricate relationship between fertility, life force, and the divine order. They underscored the powerful role that sex played in their understanding of the cosmic cycle of life and death. Hence, the sexual symbolism in Egyptian art provides profound insight into how sex was viewed in ancient Egyptian society as a potent force of creation, a divine act, and a key component in the cyclic journey of life. This perspective framed their socio-cultural norms, influenced their religious practices, and shaped their understanding of gender roles and marital relations, the details of which will be explored in the chapters to follow. Number 2. The Role of Fertility Gods and Goddesses The pantheon of ancient Egypt was filled with deities associated with various aspects of life, death, and the natural world. Among these deities, many were connected to fertility, childbirth, and sexuality, underlining the importance of these themes in ancient Egyptian society. At the center of these deities was Isis, the goddess of motherhood, fertility, and magic. Isis was revered as the ideal woman and mother. She was often portrayed breastfeeding her son Horus, a depiction that symbolized the nurturing aspect of femininity and its essential role in propagating life. Beside Isis stood Osiris, her husband, and the god of fertility, agriculture, and the afterlife. Osiris was often depicted with green skin, symbolizing vegetation and renewal. It's said that Isis resurrected Osiris after he was killed by his brother Seth. This resurrection was often associated with sexual intercourse, reinforcing the concept of sex as a life-giving, regenerative act. Another significant deity was Hathor, the goddess of love, beauty, and joy. Hathor was also a protector of women, particularly during childbirth, and she played a crucial role in rituals related to sexuality and fertility. Lastly, Min, the god of male sexual potency, was a key figure. Often depicted with an erect phallus, he was a symbol of virility and sexual prowess. His image was prevalent during the Harvest Festival, where lettuces, believed to be an aphrodisiac, were offered to him to ensure a bountiful harvest. These fertility gods and goddesses reflected the ancient Egyptians' deep-rooted belief in the power of sexuality and fertility. They were invoked during sex, childbirth, and even in spells to cure impotency or infertility, signifying the intertwining of the divine with the deeply personal and intimate aspects of sex. Number 3. 
Egyptian Erotic Papyri The Egyptian Erotic Papyri are among the most explicit records of ancient Egyptian sexual life. The most famous among them is the Turin Erotic Papyrus, dating back to the Ramesside period, 1292 to 1075 BC. This papyrus presents a series of explicit sexual scenes and is one of the earliest known examples of erotic art. Unlike many other ancient cultures which depicted sex as purely functional or procreative, the scenes in the Turin erotic papyrus suggest a society that also appreciated the pleasure aspect of sex. The scenes feature various sexual positions, often with an element of humor. Men and women are depicted engaging in sex enthusiastically, signifying an openness towards sexual enjoyment. It's important to note that the Turin erotic papyrus was likely an elite object, suggesting that it may not reflect the perspectives of the average ancient Egyptian. However, it does indicate that among the upper classes, there was a space for the celebration of sexual pleasure. While much of the papyrus focuses on heterosexual sex, some scholars believe it also contains veiled references to non-heteronormative sexual behaviors. This possible inclusivity suggests that ancient Egyptian society may have had a broader understanding of sexuality than is often assumed. The Egyptian erotic papyri serve as an enlightening source on the sexual norms and practices of ancient Egypt. They tell a story of a society that viewed sex not only as a procreative act, but also as an enjoyable activity imbued with humor, pleasure, and perhaps even diversity. These records underline the sophisticated nature of ancient Egyptian attitudes towards sex, pointing to a culture that recognized and embraced the complexities of human sexuality. Number 4. Sexual Education and Papyrus Texts Sexual education in ancient Egypt was inherently different from modern perceptions of the subject. Given the openness with which sexuality was portrayed in art and mythology, it is evident that children would grow up in an environment where sex, as a natural and necessary part of life, was not concealed or stigmatized. For explicit sexual education, we turn to texts like the Cahoon and Eber's Papyri, which contain an array of gynecological information, including sexual health, contraception, and childbirth. These medical papyri, authored by learned scribes, were likely intended for a professional audience. However, they provide us with an understanding of the knowledge disseminated among the people of the time. The Cahoon Papyrus, dating back to around 1825 BC, is particularly focused on women's health, including fertility and pregnancy. This indicates a well-established knowledge of female physiology and sexual health. The Ebers Papyrus, one of the oldest and most significant medical papyri, also includes sections on women's health, highlighting the understanding of menstrual cycles and their link to fertility. Moreover, moral and conduct texts like the Wisdom Texts served as a guide for young people entering adulthood, providing counsel on matters like marital responsibilities and the importance of bearing children. Although not explicitly sexual education, these texts indirectly informed young people about their societal and familial roles, which inherently included sexual relations. Through these texts, sexual education was woven into the fabric of ancient Egyptian society. The information that they transmitted about sexual health and moral responsibilities helped to shape an environment where sex was understood, respected, and seen as a vital aspect of human existence. Number 5. Contraception Methods in Ancient Egypt In ancient Egypt, understanding of sexual health was surprisingly sophisticated. The Egyptians had developed numerous contraception methods, as evidenced by various medical texts like the Abers and Cahoon Papyri. The most commonly used contraceptive was a pessary, a device placed inside the vagina to prevent sperm from reaching the uterus. Made from ingredients like crocodile dung, honey, and acacia gum, these pessaries acted as physical barriers and possibly altered the pH environment of the vagina to be inhospitable for sperm. Another popular method was the use of acacia gum, which, when fermented, produces lactic acid, an ingredient found in modern spermicides. This substance was often combined with dates and honey and inserted into the vagina before intercourse. Contraception in ancient Egypt wasn't solely the responsibility of women. Men used a rudimentary form of condom made from animal intestines or bladders. 
While its effectiveness as a contraceptive is questionable, it would have provided some protection against sexually transmitted infections. Furthermore, ancient Egyptians practiced coitus interruptus, withdrawal method, and had an awareness of the fertility cycle, understanding that there were certain periods in a woman's cycle when she was less likely to conceive. These contraception methods demonstrate the ancient Egyptians' advanced understanding of sexual health and their practical approach to family planning. It was a society that recognized the potential consequences of sex and proactively sought to control them, exhibiting a forward-thinking perspective that resonates with modern-day understanding of sexual health. Number 6. Sacred Prostitution and the Cult of Isis Sacred prostitution, a highly debated topic among scholars, is thought to have been part of certain religious rituals in ancient Egypt. It involved priestesses, often serving in temples dedicated to goddesses like Isis, engaging in sexual intercourse as an act of worship. However, the concept might be misrepresented due to the misconceptions of early historians and archaeologists. The cult of Isis, one of the most prominent religious movements in ancient Egypt, has been associated with this practice. Isis, goddess of magic, fertility, and motherhood, was worshipped for her ability to heal and protect. Her temples were places of sanctuary, healing, and enlightenment. It's argued that the sacred prostitutes, or priestesses of these temples, weren't prostitutes in the modern sense, but rather were women of high status. They were believed to embody the goddess during specific rituals. Sex, in this context, was a holy and magical act, a communion with the divine. The sacred marriage rite, in which the king engaged in a ceremonial sexual act with a high priestess, is an example. It wasn't about carnal pleasure, but was symbolic, ensuring the fertility and prosperity of the land. However, it's essential to approach the concept of sacred prostitution with caution. The evidence is largely circumstantial and based on the interpretation of religious texts and iconography. Some scholars suggest the practice might have been less prevalent than previously thought, or perhaps metaphorical rather than literal. Number 7. The Significance of Phallic Imagery Phallic imagery was prominent in ancient Egyptian culture, symbolizing virility, potency, and the creative force. Phallic symbols were believed to ward off evil spirits and were used in various rituals to promote fertility and prosperity. One of the most iconic phallic symbols was the Osiris Pillar, or Jed. After being killed and dismembered by his brother Seth, Osiris was reconstructed by Isis, all but his phallus, which was replaced with a golden one. The Jed Pillar symbolized this mythologically significant phallus, representing stability, fertility, and the resurrection of Osiris. The god Min, often depicted with an erect phallus, was another powerful phallic symbol. Temples and shrines dedicated to Min frequently featured large statues of him in this form. During festivals, phallic-shaped bread was eaten, and enormous lettuce, believed to be Min's favorite food and an aphrodisiac, was carried in processions. Pharaohs were often depicted in a state of arousal in sculptures and paintings, symbolizing their virility and divine power. The royal lineage's continuation was a significant concern, and a potent pharaoh guaranteed the kingdom's future. Phallic amulets were common, worn by both men and women, and even used as protective talismans for children. They were seen as a potent charm against evil, and a promoter of good fortune and fertility. These various uses of phallic imagery illustrate how central this symbol was in ancient Egypt. The phallus, as a symbol of creation and regeneration, linked sexual potency to the divine order, further underlining the profound significance of sex in Egyptian society. Number 8. Marriage and Marital Rites Marriage in ancient Egypt was an important societal institution, primarily concerned with ensuring legitimate offspring. Interestingly, there were no formal marriage ceremonies. Instead, a couple was considered married when they started living together. While it was typical for men to marry in their early 20s and women in their early teens, it wasn't a rigid norm. Evidence also suggests that both men and women had the right to choose their partners. Love and companionship were considered essential aspects of marriage, as depicted in love poetry and letters of the New Kingdom period. In terms of marital rights, ancient Egypt was comparatively progressive. Women had substantial rights and responsibilities within the marital relationship. 
They could own and inherit property, initiate divorce, and represent themselves in court. In divorce, which was not uncommon, women were often granted alimony and retained possession of their dowries. Monogamy was the standard in ancient Egypt, although there were exceptions, particularly among the royalty, where polygamy was practiced for political and dynastic reasons. There is also evidence of extramarital relationships, but these were generally looked down upon. Marital sexuality was considered a vital aspect of a successful union. There were no societal taboos against the expression of marital affection and desire. Erotic papyri, texts, and art indicate that sex was enjoyed within marriage, not just for procreation, but also for mutual pleasure. Number 9. The Duality of Gender and Sexuality Ancient Egyptian society was characterized by a certain level of gender duality. Men and women had distinct roles, but shared equally in religious, social, and economic life. This duality extended to their understanding of sexuality, wherein sex was considered a mutual act, integral to the balance and harmony of life. Gender roles were not as rigid as in some other ancient societies. Women had considerable rights and could serve in significant positions like being priestesses, scribes, and even pharaohs, as in the case of Hatshepsut. This societal structure influenced the perception of sexuality. Sex wasn't seen as a solely male-driven activity. Women's sexual needs and desires were acknowledged, as evident from the various contraception methods and the discussions about fertility and sexual health in medical papyri. The mythology of ancient Egypt also supports this view. Many myths feature strong, sexually active goddesses, like Isis and Hathor, reinforcing the perception of women as equal participants in sexual activities. Despite this duality, it's crucial to remember that gender inequalities existed. Men predominantly held positions of power, and some restrictions were placed on women. However, the relative balance in the sexual domain indicates a level of sexual liberalism in ancient Egypt, highlighting the nuanced and complex nature of their understanding of gender and sexuality. Number 10. Adultery and its Consequences Sexuality in ancient Egyptian mythology was an intrinsic element, reflective of the society's attitudes towards sex. The myths portrayed sex not just as a procreative act, but also as a dynamic force driving creation, regeneration, and harmony. The myth of Geb and Nut, the earth god and sky goddess, is a perfect example. They were so tightly entwined in a perpetual sexual embrace that they had to be forcibly separated to allow creation to occur. This story underlines the vital role sex played in the cosmic order. The tales of Isis and Osiris are also steeped in sexual imagery. When Isis resurrected her husband Osiris, it was their sexual union that allowed the birth of their son, Horus. In another version, Isis transformed into a kite, a bird symbolizing passionate love and fertility, and revived Osiris with her wings beat, which was imbued with sexual connotations. Hathor, the goddess of love, beauty, and joy, was often involved in stories that celebrated sexuality. She was known for her erotic allure and ability to enthrall men and gods alike. Such myths are insightful, as they reflect the ancient Egyptians' understanding of sex as a powerful, life-giving force. Sexuality was not limited to the human sphere. It permeated the cosmos, underpinning the very process of creation and the order of the universe. Number 12. Sex and the Afterlife The afterlife held a prominent place in ancient Egyptian belief. They viewed it as an extension of earthly life, where people would continue their daily activities, including sex. One evidence of this belief is found in the erotic imagery decorating the walls of tombs. These images were believed to ensure the dead's sexual potency in the afterlife. Tomb inscriptions and prayers often invoked fertility gods and goddesses asking for sexual virility. Osiris, the god of the afterlife and resurrection, was also the god of fertility. He was regularly depicted with an erect phallus, symbolizing his power to bring life and renewal. The Book of the Dead, a guide to the afterlife, contains spells to avoid impotence and ensure sexual vitality in the afterlife. A funerary amulet known as the Isis Knot symbolized the genitalia of both genders and was worn by the deceased to ensure sexual potency in the afterlife. Servant figurines or shabti were buried with the deceased to assist them in the afterlife. Some of these figures were explicitly sexual, reflecting the belief in sexual activity in the afterlife. Thus, 
In the ancient Egyptian conception of the afterlife, sex was a continuation of earthly existence. It was part of the pleasurable activities to be enjoyed in the eternal life, reflecting the pervasive role of sexuality in their worldview. Number 13. Sex-Related Hieroglyphics and Their Meanings Hieroglyphics, the formal writing system of ancient Egypt, are essential to understanding Egyptian culture, including their views on sex. Several hieroglyphics depict sexual activities or body parts, often associated with fertility and creation. The Ankh, a symbol of life, was one such symbol with sexual connotations. It represented the union of male and female and was often depicted in the hands of gods, bestowing life upon the pharaoh. Phallic symbols, like the Jed, which represented the phallus of the god Osiris, were common. The Jed was a symbol of stability and resurrection embodying the regenerative power of sexual activity. The Waz scepter, another phallic symbol, represented power and dominion. It was often depicted in divine and royal iconography, underlining the connection between sexual potency and authority. Images of Min, the god of fertility and lettuce, were often accompanied by hieroglyphics signifying thousands, indicating his role in bestowing abundant progeny. Lettuce, believed to be an aphrodisiac, was often depicted alongside erotic scenes in hieroglyphic art. While explicit sexual acts were not commonly depicted in hieroglyphic texts due to their sacred nature, various symbols served as metaphors for sexual activities, reinforcing the theme of sex as a natural, life-giving process. Number 14. Sexual Health and Medicine Ancient Egyptians had a comprehensive understanding of sexual health. Their knowledge is evident in the numerous medical texts, like the Cahoon and Eber's Papyri, which contain a wealth of information about gynecology, fertility, and contraception. The Egyptians identified many sexually transmitted diseases and developed treatments for them. Remedies, often a mix of magic and medicine, included the use of honey, milk, and specific herbs. They were also aware of the health benefits of circumcision and practiced it widely. Contraception was sophisticated in ancient Egypt. The use of acacia gum, which has spermicidal properties and pessaries made of various substances, indicate a detailed understanding of fertility and the mechanisms of conception. The ancient Egyptians recognized the importance of regular sexual activity for overall health. They believed that a harmonious sexual relationship was essential for physical, mental, and emotional well-being. Women's sexual health was given significant attention. Medical texts contain treatments for issues related to menstruation, childbirth, and fertility. There's also evidence of midwifery and female medical professionals who specialized in gynecological care. Thus, the ancient Egyptians' approach to sexual health was multifaceted, integrating physical health, emotional well-being, and societal harmony. It was a society that recognized the importance of sex and took steps to ensure its healthful practice. Number 15. The Unspoken, Homosexuality in Ancient Egypt The topic of homosexuality in ancient Egypt is complex and nuanced, with much of our understanding being speculative and based on fragmentary evidence. Unlike other aspects of sexuality, it was not overtly depicted in texts or artwork, leaving room for interpretation and debate among scholars. One of the most well-known pieces of evidence suggesting homosexuality is the story of two royal officials, Niankhnum and Khnumhotep, buried together in a shared tomb at Saqqara dating from the 5th dynasty, circa 2494-2345 BC. The tomb's artwork shows them in intimate poses, usually reserved for heterosexual couples, including nose-to-nose, -nose, a depiction of a kiss in Egyptian art. While some scholars suggest they might have been twin brothers or best friends, others consider this as evidence of a homosexual relationship. In Egyptian mythology, there are hints of same-sex desire. The Contendings of Horus and Seth, a narrative from the 20th dynasty, 1189-1077 BC, recounts Seth's attempts to dominate Horus by seducing him. However, these stories may symbolize power struggles rather than romantic relationships. Conversely, the Turin Erotic Papyrus, a document displaying various sexual positions, does not depict any same-sex activities, which could suggest they were not commonly accepted or recognized. It's essential to consider the cultural context when interpreting these fragmentary clues. Ancient Egyptians may not have conceptualized homosexuality as we do today, 
It is possible that same-sex relationships existed but were not overtly acknowledged or recorded in the way heterosexual relationships were. The scant evidence and the inherent ambiguity of the extant sources make it challenging to definitively ascertain the existence or social acceptance of homosexuality in ancient Egypt. It remains a topic of continued research and debate among scholars, and further archaeological discoveries may provide more clarity in the future.